We continue now with our look at the acclaimed documentary, No End in Sight, with the film's writer, producer, and director, Charles Ferguson. This is his first ever film project, believe it or not, following a successful career as a political scientist and business executive. Here now, another scene from No End in Sight. The CIA uh, uh, laid out a, uh, several scenarios and said if life could be lousy, life could be okay, life could be better. The president hadn't read it, not even the one-page summary over which we worked so hard to reduce these findings to a single readable page. The president had not read even the executive summary. Correct. And they were just... Uh, guessing as to what the conditions might be like. The president hadn't read, hadn't read a single page? That's correct. This was uh, referring to one of the national intelligence estimates on the growth of the insurgency that was prepared by uh, the National Intelligence Council, of which Robert Hutchings, who you just saw, is the chairman. Let me, let, me, let me back up and ask how you, I said a moment ago, this is your first ever film project. How did you come to have this as your first project and you couldn't have picked something a little less, uh, a little less tedious the first time out? I, I've wanted to make films for a long time. I've loved films since I was a child. Um, I, and actually in 2003, 2004, I was starting to think about how I might start making a film. But then Iraq happened. Yeah. And uh, I had a background as a political scientist. Um, in fact, my PhD thesis advisor had been deputy national security advisor for President Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And this just struck me as a subject that had to be studied. Let me, let me stand back for a second before I go back in for some more details um, to continue our conversation following our chat with, with Colonel Hughes. How do, how do you begin the process of wrapping your brain, much less your, your production staff, around this thing that is Iraq? I mean, there's so many pieces to it, so many components to it, so many complexities to it. How do you go about figuring out what piece of this, because you can't do the whole thing, you're going to focus on to do a, a documentary that actually makes sense? Well, I talked to a lot of people, I read a lot of books, uh, read a lot of articles. Um, so first I just informed myself. Right. And then I tried to think, what's really the core question here? What's, what's the issue? And it struck me that, that the issue was really, how did this all happen? Mm -hmm. How did Iraq come to be this way? How did we come to be in this terrible quagmire. What decisions were made? What were their consequences that led to this? So that's what I made the film about. If there were a short answer, there's a whole documentary, this is, un this is an unfair question. Um, I'm gonna ask it anyway though. If, if there were a, a simple answer, a less complex answer for how this happened beyond the documentary, wh what, what's the answer to that question? How did we get in this mess? Is there a short answer to that? Well, there's a somewhat short answer. I, first of all, I, I don't know if we're ever going to know the complete answer right. because it depends on what was going on inside the minds of a very small number of men and one woman, Condoleezza Rice. Um, uh, I think what occurred was a kind of perfect storm. Um, two things came together, 9-11, mm -hmm. which gave the administration the impetus and the political air cover to do this kind of thing. And then the fact that the government was run by a very small number of people who had very strong, very rigid ideas and who had remarkably little experience in doing these kinds of things. I um, left our conversation with, with Colonel Hughes to come to continue with you. Uh, and we, we stopped at the point at which he laid out the first of three mistakes that that small group of people made, and I want to expand that group out, and, I'm, and maybe you meant to include Ambassador Brimmer in that group, but if he did, we're going to put him in there for the time being. Yes. So when you read the document, you see the documentary, rather, uh, you come to believe, um, or at least the document makes the point, that three, three major mistakes that Brimmer made. One of them we talked to Colonel Hughes about, which was um, disbanding the Iraqi military. I want to discuss those other two with you now, if I might. Um, in no particular order, the first is um, halting the formation of the Iraqi government early on in this process. Tell me more about why, what that was and why that was a big mistake on Mr. Bremer's part. Well, uh, Jay Garner, and not just Jay Garner, but uh, many people involved with the occupation felt that, and, and with Iraqi affairs, felt that it was important that this not seem like a hostile occupation imposed on the Iraqi people. Mm -hmm. That there be both the appearance and the reality of giving sovereignty and influence and a public face to 
Iraqis and Iraqi leadership as soon as possible uh -huh. so that uh, Iraq could begin to govern itself and the Iraqi people would not feel themselves to be under an oppressive occupation as opposed so really to being helped. Rogue and uh, very abruptly, uh, Bremer issued an order that there would in fact be a long-term official U.S. occupation. 